pick an area of climate solutions that you're particularly interested in and understand how we've gotten to the way things are. The more that you learn about all of these different pieces, the more that you'll be able to identify where you want to fit in and the different levers that you can pull to influence change. I'm here at Point State Park in front of the Fort Pitt Museum where Pittsburgh's storied history is on display. Pittsburgh is a city known for its innovation, but one thing that's for sure is that over time as we've discovered things that are better for the environment, we need to adapt and embrace those solutions. How can we celebrate our history while also acknowledging the need to evolve, the need to transform, the need to embrace solutions? Today I'm talking with Sarah Lexic, whose family has a deep history in the steel industry, who's now working with utility to ensure that Pittsburgh overall can embrace smart alternatives. Just to start us out, can you introduce yourself, your name, and who you are? My name is Sarah Alexak, and I'm the manager of transportation electrification at Duquesne Light Company in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Today, we're at Duquesne Light's Operations Center on the north side of Pittsburgh in a neighborhood called Manchester. What happens at this Operations Center? At the Operations Center, um, one of the things that we do here is we have our EDT training program to become line workers. And another thing that is also uh, happening here is that we have our center of our fleet, our maintenance facility for our fleet. And lastly, but probably most importantly, <laughs> one thing to highlight is our operations command center. What's the work that you do? So at Duquesne Light, being a manager of transportation electrification, means helping our customers and our members of our community transition from gasoline vehicles to electric vehicles. And it also means helping our customers and members of our community install electric vehicle charging stations at their homes and in their, at their businesses um, and elsewhere in our community. How's the work that you do a climate solution or what makes a climate solution? So as of 2019, transportation accounts for the largest share of greenhouse gas emissions in the U.S. So when we think about areas that we need to work on to chip away those greenhouse gas emissions, transportation is a huge area. And so that's what I've devoted my career to. Steel is a big part of Pittsburgh. <laughs> Coal is a big part of Pittsburgh. Yeah. A lot of those like blue collar jobs are more part of Pittsburgh. Like, could you talk about your experiences with that? So like a lot of families in the Pittsburgh area, my family definitely has a past of working in coal and steel. And they began that time in central Pennsylvania in the coal mines. So most of my family was from Slovakia and they immigrated to the US for a better life, like so many people do. And after working in the coal mines, my great grandfather said that he wanted an even better life for his children. So he moved the family to Pittsburgh so that they could work in the steel mills. And that's what my grandfather did. And it's what my father had a career in steel as well. Could you talk more about your path? After deciding that I wanted you know, a different path and, and going to college and pursuing something where I felt like I could make a difference in a way to our world. I think as a lot of kids that are going off to college, they want to make an impact. And so I decided to major in biology. And while I was at school, I took a class called environmental ethics. And I think that that was one of the first classes for me that sort of like the light bulb went off. This is the subset of philosophy that says, you know, what is humankind's moral obligation for protecting the environment and how we look at preserving our natural resources? I think it's interesting just to kind of think about why transportation was the area that you ended up focusing in. Could you talk more about like that piece of the journey? So while it was random luck that I started there as my first job, it was pretty quickly that I realized that 
this would be where I would probably be for a long time because it's just such a huge area of opportunity and it's transforming so rapidly and it's so exciting. So I was like, this, this is cool. This is where I want to be and this is where I want to learn. Mm -hmm. And I think that that was a really important part of that decision was recognizing that that might not have been my, my college backgrounds. I wasn't an engineer, but I could learn a lot by being part of the conversation. The next stage of my career was working with the U.S. Department of Energy. And that was an amazing decade of my life. I started during the Bush administration. I was there for all eight years of the Obama administration as well. And during that time, got to be part of something really special with a lot of people who were really embracing the change that we needed to be making in the energy sector. And what is it that you love about Pittsburgh now? I think that Pittsburgh is a place where we really, really embrace our past and what got us to where we are. We have so many advances that have been made here in energy, in manufacturing, in the steel industry, and in so much more. And the evolution of our local industry and the people who are making things happen here and it's something that's really special. Environmental issues are a huge part of that, and I hope that you guys will see that as you kind of journey through Pittsburgh. So many players doing so many really exciting things. If you had a magic wand, I'll say, like what is the impact that you would want to have with your work, especially when it comes to electric vehicles and electric transportation? Our vision and our mission with our work is that we're empowering all of our customers to experience the benefits of electric mobility. Mm -hmm. And that may mean buying an electric vehicle, leasing an electric vehicle. It may be riding an electric scooter or an electric bike. Or it might just mean also thinking about opportunities to incorporate EVs into your fleet and having all members of our community be able to access public transportation that is powered by electricity. Yeah. And so that's what we really want to do. And if I had the ability to wave a magic wand, I would say that that is it. It is all members of our community experiencing the benefits of electric mobility, directly and indirectly, through the emissions reductions that will be had as we transition to electric mobility. It's the benefit of that quick acceleration and instant torque of driving an electric vehicle. It's the silence of a medium and heavy duty truck picking up your garbage silently in the mornings. These are all of the benefits that electric mobility can bring and really so much more. And that's what I would want it to have happen. What advice do you have for people to <laughs> take on a career that, that is making impact when it comes to the environment, similar to, to what you do? One of the things that I would say is immerse yourself in the issue. And when I say that, I mean, get to really know the issue, get to know the players, Pick an area of climate solutions that you're particularly interested in and understand how we've gotten to the way things are. Understand the different players and the participants. Who are the nonprofits working in this space? Who is the industry, the academic researchers? What are the government agencies that are involved in funding research or um, monitoring regulatory issues? The more that you learn about all of these different pieces, the more that you'll be able to identify where you want to fit in and the different levers that you can pull to influence change. Could you talk about the benefit um, or the impact that immersing yourself in Pittsburgh and understanding Pittsburgh has in the work that you do? I think when you are trying to influence change, it's this is behavior change, this is political change, this is technology change. But when it comes to real world solutions for climate change, much of it's behavioral. And much of these decisions are being made at the societal and community levels. By being part of a community, 
you can understand that community's needs so much more. And that's something that we've been thinking a lot about. Um, I've been thinking a lot about personally and professionally as we think about the importance of equity um, in this electric transportation solution, as we think about climate change solutions, how we're thinking about equity there. And that's being part of a community and understanding their needs. Sarah, what excites you most about the work that you do? We're really chartering a new path. There is really no right and wrong answer here. Um, we're learning about technology solutions. We're trying to solve policy puzzles yeah. and we get to learn as we go. And I think that people who are working in this space are a really, really great group of people across the nation, across the globe. And it just is amazing to feel like you're part of something. And I think that we are part of something here in Pittsburgh. And I think that we are leading something here in Pittsburgh. And that's something that makes me feel really proud. You'll hear about pride a lot in Pittsburgh. And I think that we have a lot to be proud of here. My name is Sarah Alexak, and I'm helping the world reach drawdown by electrifying transportation.